All right, so Karachi S and D. This is for the reverse sweep. We start round one offense, and we just we say fuck it, we're gonna do an A hit. Try and catch them off guard. They actually see two people towards the A side. Usually, usually teams would send uh, you know max two people, obviously, but usually just one person because B side was just so much more. Um, it's it was so much more offensively decided to go B. So you can catch people off guard if you want A. This is, a, this is a really good clear. A lot of times people would play around this curve. Ant, Ant plays around this very well. Gets over to the diner. As soon as you would get a kill, you'd want to push up to the diner to get space on that side of the map. If you know what I mean. So you get space on that side of the map. But they have two here. So he, yeah, like Kremp ends up killing AG. Ant uh, gets the trade on in. So we're chilling. Now it's a 3v2. We know the other guys were, were their B-side players. Brandon's top third. He's our lurker player. He sees this guy going top fire. Free kill. Last guy alive is going to be rotating from B to A. He actually goes into the smoke, and, and they do end up seeing him go on bomb. He's expecting the, the person to be planning, so we just kind of bait him out there. So we could have picked uh, Invasion this map, but we also knew that they were more comfortable on invasion because it was their most played like they played a lot of invasion search so hindsight we could have played invasion too but we figured we'd just play the karachi because we were still comfortable on karachi i think that was our decision from it it happened a long time ago but i'm pretty sure that's what the decision was so we kind of do a same uh similar thing two two brandon and uh adri are going to be on the b side ken and ant are going to be on the a side they have one guy lurking towards Fireside. The rest of the guys are going to be working the B site. They see AG McCut. We realize it's not going to be an A thing. So we can make plays through mid map and trying to get towards the B side, knowing that they're probably going to be working this out. We see, we see us out rotating. AG's already made it towards the low bridge as well. Being towards the low bridge is really important, especially on defense, because obviously they need to kill you before they get to bomb. They smoke, they get on to bomb. I'm not sure if they know that AG is crossed here yet, but look at the space that we're able to get. Like, we, we have all this space middle, we have, you know, top dome. Or sorry, no, this is low cash. We have low cash. We have top bridge. They get a kill top uh, top third. But look look at Ant. Ant has already made his way underneath. So he can go up to the top AC. Actually, they catch him for it. So that's not great. But they still haven't got the bomb, which is still good for us. Now he's like, okay, they're probably rotating A, right? We see the rotation. We see that they're going like passing mid. So Brandon's going to bump over towards the A side. I think they wrap back here, right? Yeah, they wrap back. So this is, in my opinion, probably just an easy read because they know that we saw them go cross over to A side. So they're just like, okay, let's fucking double back. We know that they crossed the A to try and counter this. So let's let's go back to B. So as soon as Brandon doesn't see him here, we probably should have just, you know, instantly went back to B. So Pred, yeah, he's just in a one-off situation where he just he's in a in a one and done basically. They're going to double challenge him. He doesn't even get one for it. Now it's kind of just lost. 2v3. They're about to get bombed down B. And retakes B were really hard. I'll talk about that later. Once again... Like I said before, not many teams would send multiple people to A, so they just have Joe DC who's playing this back diner heady. Everyone else is going to be play, playing towards B side or mid. Top plat, low cash, and uh, we have one guy bridge. This is very interesting. So we, in this round, on offense, did a mid counter. So, or sorry, a bridge counter is what we would call it. You have Ken go to the right side of P1, instantly look down here, and you can usually see this guy go on bridge. The one thing about this, though, is if you look at the spawn, Kremp gets the closest spawn for the team. 
So if you get the closest spawn, you actually beat this bridge counter. So that's like the one annoying thing is like, yeah, the, the spawns are just random. And Kremp was the one to get that good spawn. So he's able to actually beat this timing where he actually already gets towards here before Ken can see him cross. So Ken's expecting to see the guy cross, but he he has the best spawn, so he can he has the timing for it. So as you see here, he gets past. Ken looks, he doesn't see anything, so he expects nothing to cross bridge. Now we see him. Uh, I think it was Ken who sees him because he goes to top AC. He actually sees his head. AG's pushed up lurking through fire. So he's playing for anyone that might be pushing from A side to mid and B side. That's his job here. He, he's just a lurker. And trying to look for Crump here. Instead he... Actually, I thought he got go for the bomb bomb, but... Instead of going for the bomb plant, he goes up the stairs towards the clock tower. I like this play. I like going up the stairs. You go up the stairs, you make it so much more awkward for this guy on the bridge. Now they teamwork with each other because Ken is now dropped down to the low mid cut. They, this guy is completely trapped. Brandon on the other side actually is still top third and he sees this guy rotating from short. So, or sorry, AG number three doesn't have this. He just has the top fire. He doesn't really have... Uh, the short slash P1 push. Good pickup by Brandon. Really big pickup. Because if, if he doesn't see this guy number 8 and he pinches through, we can lose this round. We know this other guy's trapped here still. You know, Dan can't really peek yet. I mean, maybe he could peek, but he has to be worried about his AC and top, uh, top 3. Because they don't have any of that. Kremp actually gets a kill on Kenny, but it's instantly traded. Now they can work their, their way toward bomb. This is good by Ant to jiggle this. You jiggle this because you know the guy's either you know, top founder or low cash. If he's low cash, you have to jiggle it. Or else you just die trying to go to the bomb. Now this is a position where AG can start making moves. They're still worried about a possible player too, flanking like low, low short or anything. Nasty's still looking for him. They plant B. Unfortunately... As soon as AG activates, this guy jumps into the fire. He probably would have got the kill anyways, but again, still bomb down. That's the goal for the offensive round. Hard retake because now we're at bridge and top three. Anch to staying alive bridge, jiggling. He can stay alive while Brandon is playing a super cruddy inside the coop building. It's so hard for them to clear both of them. They actually kill Ant. That's the, that's the hard part about leaving top three and going and playing this coop uh, window is you can't really help Ant at all if they go jump top three. Ant tries to finish the first guy, but he, he does expose himself uh, to top third, and that's how Nasty gets that kill. But Brandon, from this area, this is just like the safety net. This is the... The fail safe. Kill the guy hopping bomb. Now you win the round. They don't have enough time. By the way, JP, I hope my comments in your chat don't make me think I'm dope. Uh, love optic and everything. Just asking quite. Oh no, you're chilling. You're chilling. I know. You're you're always in here. Radiation. Really enjoyed watching CDL this year, especially World Champs. I enjoyed watching it too. I'm glad you did. So LAT, they f go for a hit of their own. This time we still do send two people towards the side. Um, but I don't think they tacked it. Or they tacked it a little bit too early maybe. I'm trying to see what happened here. Because it doesn't look like we're too ready for it. Because they just, I mean, they just fully stomp our, our push. So Ken gets one, but they get traded out. 2v3 now. It's AG and Brandon. Again, AG tries to make a play, but it's just... It's so hard to make a play when they have all the map control here. Out towards the A side. 
1v3, nothing really could do. Oh, is he doing a nameless? Yeah, <laughs> the nameless, yeah, just squinting to look at anything, yeah. So this is, um, I don't know what you call it, kind of like a spread where we're giving up. Uh, we're not going to go B right at the beginning. We're just making sure that we're holding our mid push. That's where Ken comes in. And we're just waiting for AG and Ant to do something fire, working together. Six straight game five losses. No ice in Texas, but... They get pushed up for free. They see this guy short, get a free kill. Brandon himself, he, he kills this guy mid-cut, free kills. I mean, this is a, just a really good play for them. It's kind of like a hard counter because they're not sending anyone towards fire. And they're just kind of trying to take mid-control themselves. So because they're focused so much on the mid control themselves, they don't have like the outskirts, especially for the, for the A side. So them doubling this up here, and as soon as they give this up, um, Asian Ant start activating. Like as soon as you look, Nasty's up here. He sees him right at the last moment, but he can't really help. And uh, Joe to see as soon as he's starting to turn around, they kill him. This was the annoying. Okay. This is a round we end up losing, and it's very, it was very annoying for us, like, in the, the dugout for me and Damon. Because as soon as we get those two kills, the round should be won. AG here, I think he gets a little overzealous, and so does Ken. Where, you know, Ken wants to help out AG in this scenario, but both of them should just exit, fucking leave this, and just go plan B. Because the only way they clutch is, is if we consistently trying to hit through the fountain, and both of them are there. And, uh, and we, like, they can just finesse us, you know? So as soon as, I, I think as soon as AG can't get this kill, he just backs the fuck up right away or something. Like, or as soon as Ant dies, he just backs up. Because the smoke is there. There's no point fighting this because, you know, he's going to go in there and then Ken's going to try and help him from top AC. And they're just, I don't know, they're just trying to do too much. Just... Leave it, fucking go plant B, because that's what Brandon's saying. Brandon's like, oh, you guys are rotating, right? Basically. Um, but this is the only way that they can clutch it. Make them push out to the open, make them push out to Brandon, get the bomb down, you know? So that was a that was a bad clutch out of them. I mean bad clutch that we give up. We should have won that round hundred percent. This is a full B counter from us. So we have Ken at the top bus. He's going to be watching like all, basically all of the low push over here. We have uh, Brandon, low fountain. He can watch this and he can also go towards cash and watch this. And then we have uh, AG and Ant playing towards you know, top scaff and if he wants top AC. But it was more so like mid cut to, to counter anything mid side. And actually makes his way to the top coop building. So this is really, really weird for them. Because they're kind of playing a spread here. As you see, one guy playing junk, one guy middle, uh, one guy coop, and one guy top three. So Nasty doesn't really have anyone he can work with to like jump on this guy. The closest guy is top third. And Ann is just being annoying here. Flying, <laughs> flying out of the coop window. And they can just play towards bridge. They don't have to really do any, anything. Ken gets a free pick here. This is Krem trying to lurk on towards the A side. He doesn't see Ken behind the bus. Ken gets a free blood. So once again, we have a blood. Just make sure they can't wrap to, to A. That's what number one's doing. Make sure they can't wrap towards mid. That's he, what he's doing. And we're all playing off of AG. Because AG is just staying alive bridge. If they're going to, you know, if they're going to hit him out, they're going to hit him out. But we don't have to, like, play with him anymore. Like, we can kind of just give him up. And, you know, if anything, Brandy can help him through low cash. Now the time is ticking. So they got to they gotta hit something out. Attack comes out. Dan tries to challenge AG. AG gets a kill for it. They see this guy top AC. We can play for that guy. Last guy live coop. This is big. We actually give Nasty the cruise. So him getting that kill was, was pretty big for them. But uh, a really nice defensive round one. Good first blood out of Ken for just holding that, that lurker pinch. 
We shouldn't look too far into that Draza tweet, right, y'all? Major bait. I don't know what the tweet is. I'll, I'll look at it. I'll look at it after we, we watch this map. We go back on defense. That was a big round. Now it's 3-3. Three three. We go on an offense. We're just going to go for a full-on B, B push. Two top three, two low coop. On the other side for them, it's kind of the same med counter that they they did in the previous round. So they're, they're giving up the A push, kind of playing more towards mid. They should know that we're probably like hitting towards B now. But look at the look at the openings that we have. No one for them is watching like top third or anything low like uh, like top fountain. So this guy who's towards scaff. He's just getting ran up on by Brandon. He sees him, you know, go mid cut. So Brandon can, can play for this. Big first kill. Now he's getting shot by short, but he stays alive. By number eight. Now we have full sight control. We can just plan it right now here. AG is now pushed up from top uh, A seeds to top fountain. That was the big thing with, uh, with this type of setup is like, or just defense in general in this map is there's just a big blind spot. Top AC to top fountain like this. You see a lot of teams making plays like that. Well, well when I talk about the uh, New York match, again, Paco makes this play all the time. You know, Ant makes that play all the time. So AG activating through fountain. These guys are already pushing towards short. This is a free, free kill for him. Brandy gets another one. Now he can plant the bomb. Last guy alive, Dan. Should be a free round one. Once again, 2-2. This time, uh, you know, no one top AC. We just have Brandon top dome. One guy top uh, AC to counter this. Like, uh, the top AC stuff. And then these two guys, uh, A side. And, 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 and Ken. They don't see anything A side. Now they can, you know, work their way towards working help in the mid. While AG stays alive top, uh, top coop. Sorry, top AC. But what happens here? Nasty cruise. So we give up the cruise missile. In that other round, they get this for this offense. Now we have to completely give up the site. Because there's nowhere on the site where we can, you know, stay alive with the crews. Or there's nowhere that we could have gone to. Oh, I have to go back to it. My bad. So, AG has to back up. Brandon has to back up as well to the back room. These guys top fire are chilling. This is actually a round I uh, did a full YouTube breakdown on. So if you haven't watched it already, uh, it, I'll, I'll talk about the same stuff, but it's an even more in-depth breakdown on this round. So they started playing the bomb. They have bomb control. And once again, B site retakes were just the hardest in the game on this map. If, they, if the offense got the bomb down, I think it was like an 86% win rate for the offense. But the big thing here, I'll talk, I talk about in the video, they gave up the top three control. So that means Ant's able to get up to top three without them seeing him. He catches Nasty off guard. From that, it's a it's a it's a four v three. Ant goes a little bit too rogue here. He gets uh, you know Dan really weak, but Dan moves away out of this position, and Jodeci is able to help him out. But from here, three v three. Ken looks at the the same uh you know fail safe coop window for anyone trying to look at bomb. Jodeci is there, but he actually goes to his left side, so he's not actually playing the window. This is the biggest play of, of the entire, probably the series. Brandon rotates from bomb to mid cut to watch the jump out from anyone going brick side. This is a really big play because it's a really insane read because he knows it's such a good play for them to activate this way with us, you know, playing on bomb and playing on bridge to, to get free kills on us in the back. So Brandon pre pops this, reads this, and kills Kremp for it. And it's it's the first kill of the of the you know the three v three, and uh, it was just massive because that allows Ken and Ag to to take some space, especially Ken here, and he just gets run up, uh, or he just runs up on on Joe to seize right there, and Ag wins the last one on on Dan. Huge retake, massive retake. I actually said, Kremp, you ain't rapping me. I went to the inner school of S&D when watching the map pack. Agre agreed. Like, that's such a good read. That's why I wanted to make that video in, in the first place. Because it's, like, it, no one's really going to talk about it. But it's such an insane good read that completely flips the, the round on his head. 
and it's a dagger round. It goes, you know, from us being tied 4-4, four, four, we're now up 5-3. Was Kremp top bricks or jump jump dump down? He was top bricks going to jump down. So I think Brandon kills him as he's jumping down to try and hit the mid cut so that he can flank us. So it's, it's just a crazy read by Brandon. So we full nade the street. Everyone's going to go B side except for uh, AG. He's going to once again look towards the A side here. You have Joe to is playing inside the bus, super cruddy. Uh, once again, Dan watching low cash, but Ant smoked this out. Or actually, no, this isn't Ant smoke. This is their smoke. This is Krem's smoke. Krem actually gives us a smoke to work with. I'm surprised they did that. So Krem smokes this out because Ant still has a smoke alive. He can use this whenever he wants. So I think Kremp is smoking so he can uh, go up to the top fountain. Or actually... Oh, okay. So he's, he was trying to smoke so that he can get to the bridge. But because of our triple nades, he backed off. He didn't want to, he didn't want to chow the nades. So that's what happens there. So Ann is able to get onto bomb with his own smoke. Or with L.E.T. smoke. It was to fake the, like they crossed. I mean, yeah, I guess. Yeah, that's probably what it is. I mean, I just... I feel like we would have... We would have naded him if he crossed, though. No? Maybe not. Maybe our nades would have been late. But I see, I see what you mean. So yeah, that, that's probably the case. He's probably fake crossing. But I feel like we would have we hit him with a nade. So we get bombsite control for free because obviously they, they fake cross or whatever. We see Dan low short. Uh, Brandon is not going to, you know, hard chow that. He's going to help out top fountain. That's what he does. Cramps over there. He get, we get a free kill. AG once again on the lurk towards the A side. They're not keen on it once again. Or actually they are keen on it. Nasty is keen on it, but he's able to get the kill on Dan before uh, Nasty is able to pick him up. So it's a one for one over there on that side. Nasty's top fountain. We know this guy went low short too. Or sorry, low mid cut. We know he went towards the credit because that's what uh, uh, Ant calls out. Ant has a gunfight with him towards the mid cut. So Joe deceives goes toward the credit. So once we know. Uh, or once Dan dies here, we know it's just nasty fountain, last guy low credit. This is the comms you hear in the, the comms video where Ant's just like, yo, child, this guy low credit. He's 100% here. That's what they're going to do. Ant and Ken both double child this guy low credit. 3v1 now, last guy left, top fountain. And uh, we're just going to play for him. Huge reverse sweep. Really good job out of the boys to, to obviously stay composed. But the plays they were making, like the, the Karachi we played super well, the six star we played super well, and that, uh, that last Karachi search too, they were playing pretty well. There were a couple, yeah, there, there was that one troll round, the, what was it, like a 3v2 that we trolled, but good composure. And that, honestly, like that was probably our hardest match because we were down 2-0. So... That brought like a new set of life for us uh, and helped us with the with the champs run 100%.